Do you ever feel like that guy? Do you sense that God is not hearing your prayers? Do you think that God has abandoned you? It's kind of how you feel when you're sitting in a waiting room. For years, our oldest daughter, Stephanie, suffered with severe pain on her right side. We went to multiple doctors, hospitals, and clinics to find out what was wrong. And you know what all of those different places have in common? That's right. All of them have a waiting room. Are you like me? Do you despise sitting in a waiting room? Don't you oftentimes feel that the doctors and nurses have surely forgotten that you are even there? Have you waited so long that you go back to the front desk just to remind them that you are still sitting there? I've been to so many with Stephanie that I get a little nervous at some of the waiting rooms that we have had to sit in. Nervous because some waiting rooms today are very nice with comfortable chairs, large television sets, snacks and drinks free of charge. I begin to wonder just how long I am expected to wait that they feel compelled to feed me. I'd like to talk to you about lessons from the waiting room here on Directions for Living. Hi, I'm Mark Warren. No doubt there are some watching this who feel that they are in God's waiting room. I know some folks get discouraged. Some wonder what is the next step. And certainly you may wonder which direction God is going to take you in next. Let me share with you a story from the Bible that talks about being in God's waiting room and some lessons each of us can learn. It comes from the Old Testament book of Lamentations, chapter 3. Jeremiah, the prophet of God, who wrote this book, was profoundly sad. You see, the people of Judah were disobedient to God, and God finally had to punish them for their disobedience. He used the empire of Babylon to defeat their armies, ransack and destroy both Jerusalem, Judah's capital, and the temple. Not only that, but the Babylonians took thousands of Jews into slavery. With a once proud capital city now laid in waste, with a king's palace and holy temple burned and its protective walls destroyed, Jeremiah writes a series of five funeral dirges. This one is the third. In the opening 18 verses, we see Jeremiah's despair. His words tell us how he feels about God's treatment to him and to his people. I am the man who has seen affliction because of the rod of his wrath. He has driven me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. Surely against me he has turned his hand repeatedly all the day. He has caused my flesh and my skin to waste away. He has broken my bones. He has besieged and encompassed me with bitterness and hardship. In dark places he has made me dwell like those who have long been dead. He has walled me in so that I cannot go out. He has made my chain heavy. Even when I cry out and call for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my ways with hewn stone. He has made my paths crooked. He is to me like a bear lying in wait, like a lion in secret places. He has turned aside my ways and torn me to pieces. He has made me desolate. He bent his bow and set me on a target for the arrow. He made the arrows of his quiver to enter into my inward parts. I have become a laughingstock to all my people, their mocking song all the day. He has filled me with bitterness. He has made me drunk with wormwood. He has broken my teeth with gravel. He has made me cower in the dust. My soul has been rejected from peace. I have forgotten happiness. So I say my strength has perished, and so my hope from the Lord. Wow. Do you hear the anguish, the despair in his words? Have you ever felt that way toward God? Have you ever felt that his hand was against you, that you were walled in and God shut out your prayers for help? Let me reassure you, if you've ever felt that way toward God before, maybe you're feeling that way about God right now. Let me tell you not to lose hope in God. God has not forgotten you. While Jeremiah and God's chosen people did indeed feel this way, God 
doesn't leave them there. As Jeremiah reflects upon his own despair while he is in God's waiting room, God sweeps in a fresh wind of hope. From verses 19 to 26, we read of Jeremiah's hope. Jeremiah asks God not to forget him in verse 19. Remember my affliction and my wandering, the wormwood and bitterness. Jeremiah remembers God's loyal love, compassion, and faithfulness. And it brings him hope in verses 20 through 23. Surely my soul remembers and is bowed down within me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore I have hope. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Jeremiah's soul is sustained by the Lord in verse 24. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. Jeremiah declares it is good to wait on God in verse 25 and 26. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks him. It is good that he waits silently for the salvation of the Lord. Forty-eight years later, God releases the Jews from their waiting room. For all the times that Jeremiah and the other Jews in captivity felt that God had forgotten them, God was there. And in His time, God answered their prayers and delivered them. You can read more about that part of the story in Ezra chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. What are you doing while you're in God's waiting room? Are you still seeking Him in prayer? Is your hope in God? Have you remembered God's past care for you? Remember what Jeremiah said, with all things considered, the Lord is good to those who wait for Him. I hope this has been an encouragement to you. If you have been helped by today's show or would like to share your own story, write them down right in the space below. And if you haven't already subscribed to our show, please click on the big red subscribe button. Until next time, remember on life's journey, you need directions for living.